Cafe Limited comes with an impressive set of so-called safety or convenience features. This video only focuses on its autopilot-like self-driving features, which are highway driving assist, smart cruise control, and lane following assist. It even has the ancient lane keeping assist, which was a big deal six or eight years ago. This so-called LKA or lane keeping assist is the most misused term in the whole automobile industry. Its original intent was a safety system that passively monitored the lanes and only intervened when your vehicle started to cross them. The assumption was you were driving the vehicle, not it. This is the way it still works in Hyundai vehicles, so we'll leave it under safety features. Focusing on the self-driving features, which could be called the semi-autonomous driving features, there's only two to be concerned about. The smart cruise and lane following. Together, they enable self-driving. Smart Cruise with Stop and Go is enabled by this steering wheel button and displays its status in this area of the instrument cluster, which remains the same regardless of which cluster display you're using. The Smart Cruise button both turns Smart Can Cruise on, displaying this icon on the instrument cluster, and sets it at your current speed. The icon also displays if you're currently locked on a lead vehicle or not and how close your following distance is currently set at. Lane following, Hyundai's name for lane centering, is enabled by this steering wheel button. Its icon appears as a white steering wheel, which quickly turns to green as it finds the lanes and starts centering the vehicle. Now let's see how well this almost self-driving works. Sometimes you find yourself touching the wheel on a habit, like here where it's self-driving fine, even with some lanes missing. Here it quietly asks me to take the steering wheel, which I do. Touching the wheel again, just out of habit. I find as long as the steering wheel icon is green, it never crosses the line by itself. When the road is fairly straight and the lanes visible, it keeps you very centered and you soon feel comfortable even with traffic on each side of you. It keeps you centered as good as you could do it yourself. There is a learning curve involved. You've got to learn to trust it, which takes a while. Sorry for the focus problems, my cell phone camera is not as automatic as this Hyundai. Here the smart cruise gently stops us as this car enters my lane. As smart cruise accelerates us, watch as we pass through the intersection that has no lane markings. It dings to tell me to steer. Here I let it recenter itself. I'd say this self-driving technology from Hyundai, while not perfect, 
finds the lanes quicker and keeps you centered better than the others I've tested. As I found out in my testing, some other major automobile manufacturers' self-driving systems don't even work at all at speeds under 37 miles an hour. It's important for a self-driving system to work at very slow speeds and traffic jams. Hyundai's works great, as I'll show you in a minute. Still, you the driver need to know when to take control, like here where the road splits into two and we want to go left. this uh, set of S turns here. It'll try and steer and it'll help you steer, but you better steer. You'd be stupid not to. But as soon as you get out of the roly-poly part, you can let go of the wheel again. Let it take over. It'll straighten you out. It'll, it'll weaver a little bit until it kind of finds the center of the road and it'll settle in on the center. And just keep trucking right along here. Holding you nicely in the center of the road. Not bothering you all the time to put your hands on the steering wheel. It somehow works amazingly on these uh, roads. There's perhaps <clears throat> enough imperfections in the road where it gets the steering wheel rotates a little bit by itself because of gravity or or uh, forces uh, g-forces and uh, so it, it doesn't bother putting that message up and it just keeps steering now we're coming to another curve here and of course it tells you steer and I steer, especially with the car coming on. As soon as you're through the curve, just let go. Continue trucking along here. <clears throat> so we're saying that. So we have the green steering wheel, which says it's automatically steering. We, and we happen to be in uh, electric power at the moment. Can't tell the difference, really. And uh, it's steering, it's driving the car. And we're just cruising along here. I don't have to keep showing you that. My hands are never on the wheel virtually. Oh, I better not say that. I'm trying to get the best shot here, it's not easy to do. So we know it does great on a freeway, but it even does great on two-lane highways. It does very good on two-lane highways. So you come to a curve and you, you put your hands on the wheel if you're smart, or it'll even tell you, it, it senses that curve and it kind of tells you get your hands on the wheel. Now it'll kind of sense this one and maybe tell you, maybe not. And it got us to that. Now, no, so it wavers a little bit and looking again for the middle, even though it's got that message up now. We're still keeping our hands off a minute just to watch it. So it's found the center. And uh, we touch it slightly. And I mean slightly, and the message goes away, and we're back to cruising. This car drives itself about 98% of all the time.
wish the camera would stay in focus. That's the only thing that makes it difficult. Hyundai's self-driving technology really shines when you enter a limited access freeway like I-75. This thing they call HDA Highway Driving Assist comes on automatically when you're in Smart Cruise Control. HDA apparently allows longer hands-free driving intervals and even allows you to have your cruise speed automatically change as the posted limits change. It also helps ease traffic jams by allowing longer stop periods for up to 30 seconds. We're creeping along here just a little bit. But the point is, most systems, once the car stops completely, most systems time out in three to five seconds. And you have to reset. This one you don't. So if we ever do stop for a minute here, I'll try and show you. Meanwhile, it's steering slow as we keep along. Creep along here. There was one interruption. Put your hands. All right, so we're stopping, stopping, stopping all the way. We're totally stopped. Seconds: two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it goes. <laughs> Stops. Uh, it's just totally comfortable. You just sit here. Creeps along. Keep turning the center of the line, lane. You still got the uh, both steering wheel. It seems like it stays at least 30 seconds standing still. Fortunately, the traffic doesn't, you know, stand still for 30 whole seconds. But it is really fabulous. Before wrapping it up, let's clarify the lane keeping assist versus the lane following assist as they seem to overlap. In my understanding, the older technology, LKA, is a safety system targeted for drivers who do not want self-driving assistance. They want to do the steering and only want automatic assistance if they inadvertently stray from their lane while they're steering. Lane keeping assist is turned on or off either by a long press of this button on the lower left of the dashboard or by a long press on the steering wheel button. In either case, this lane keeping assist icon displays. When the display is white, it is enabled in waiting for the vehicle to detect lane markings. Even after it finds the lanes, you must be going at least 40 miles an hour before it activates and the icon stays green. Importantly, it is persistent when turned on. It remains on over many driving sessions. LFA, lane following assist, is the critical part of self-driving. Think of it as self-steering. It is turned on or off with a short press of the steering wheel button. Its icon is the steering wheel, which reminds you it means auto steering. It also looks for and locks on lane markings, but unlike lane keeping, it works at any speed. It is not persistent and must be re-engaged at each driving session. This begs the question, should you have them both on at the same time? Frankly, I couldn't find an answer in the manuals. Since they both rely on seeing and capturing the lane markings, it doesn't seem to matter much.